Deep in the heart, there's a place we call empty. It's hidden underneath the distractions we pile on it and the love for things that will never love us back. But beneath all those things is the empty. As hard as we try, we can never fill that space. Then one day, Jesus walked right up to our empty, knocked on the door of our despair, dared to stare into the dark hole that we didn't have the courage to look at ourselves. He didn't flinch, he stepped into it, then filled it with his resurrection life. Jesus showed us that the empty, filled by his love and his life, becomes beautiful. So now he calls us to empty ourselves over and over to be filled with a love that overflows, to fill our brothers and sisters, to fill dark places with bright hope, to fill death with life, to fill grief with joy, to fill fear with peace, to replace an empty tomb with the hope of life in the name of Jesus. It's the beautiful empty. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our hope. Amen. Uh, Imagine if it weren't. Just imagine for a minute if the tomb weren't empty. Can you? We know the story so well, it's kind of hard to imagine what it would have been like if the two Marys had come to the tomb and, in fact, the stone was still there, the guards were still there. If they were kind, the guards would have rolled the stone back so that the Marys could go and do what they came to do, at least in a couple of the other gospel stories which is to anoint Jesus for burial because there was no time to do that on Friday because it was the Sabbath. They would have gone away then and they would have rolled the stone, soldiers would have rolled the stone back and guarded it. They were guarding it because according to at least one of the versions of the story, Pilate was afraid that uh, Jesus' followers might come and take the body away and then claim that Jesus was alive. didn't matter, though, because we know how the story goes. We do. But can you imagine what would happen, how, how we would be thinking now, where we would be if we didn't know how the story went because the story ended right here? Would Jesus just be another prophet? Would we even have heard of Jesus? There are many different religions in the world many different paths to God. Some of them don't have Jesus. Some of them do, but they see Jesus differently. The thing is, the tomb is empty, not just because the body isn't there, but because the spirit isn't there. Because no matter what happens... Death can't take that away. Can, can, you imagine what, can you imagine what our lives would be like if when we lost someone important to us in our lives or something that's important to us in our lives, we lost all memory of it also? We could literally bury the memory with the person. Can you imagine what our life... You can't because we can't. We can't. That person is alive in us. From every experience, every moment we've had with them, that thing that we did that we suddenly aren't doing anymore or that we've lost out of our lives because it isn't there, yes, it is. Because every moment that we've had, every experience that we've had, every memory, 
we remember. Which is what remember means. It's not just the things there, it's that we reconnect with it, we remember. They're alive. It's alive because it's in us. I think one of the point, points of having this story, one of the major points of having this story about Jesus is to, that we would remember life. We would remember that death is a part of life, but death is a part of life. The important part of the story of Jesus is the life of Jesus. And because we have this story of how Jesus was alive, that we have this story of resurrection, that death can't win, we know Jesus is alive in all of us. And in other traditions, whatever you want to call that spirit, whatever name you put on that, Whatever, whatever name you give to it, it brings us to God. It reminds us, it reminds us of the divine spirit that's in each of us, and it reconnects us with God. It remembers us with God. I think Jesus was meaning in his life to show us that we are of God and bring us back to God. The sacrifice of the cross and the death is the exclamation point on that story because it doesn't win. Death doesn't win. It doesn't end anything. In fact, the power of the resurrection is new life. Not just that we remember and we reconnect but that we can live into it. All of the dreams that we have, all of the wishes we have, all of the things that Jesus wants us to live out of the goodness that is in us, we can. We can. Because Jesus is alive in each of us. The spirit, the divine spirit, the goodness, the good in each of us is there to be lived. So what will we do with it? What are, we, what are we putting in, what are we filling our egg with that we might then live into the world? Because that too is the point. It's not just that we are filled by the emptiness of the tomb, but that we might then empty ourselves into the world to again be refilled by the emptiness of the tomb. It's the, the constant circle of that that is never never ending because death doesn't win. Love wins. Love carries us forward. Love gives life. Love gives new life. So what will you, what will you live into the world? What new life will you begin bring to the world around you? How will the new life of Jesus that comes to you from the empty tomb, how will you live that into the world?